Good morning. Well, that was pretty good for a rainy Sunday morning. I'm proud of you. That, that was good. And we are so glad that you are here at Keith Church this morning. Our beautiful flowers in worship today are given in honor and in memory of our Indiana families, it says, by Curtis and Michelle Crafton, and they are just beautiful, and they look like spring. So thank you for sharing those with us. An important announcement to benefit Nourish One Child, uh, we are going to be partnering with the Belk Department Store for a special charity sale fundraiser. You can see the details about this in your bulletin, but it looks like a wonderful opportunity to find yet another way to support this incredible service of our church. If you would like to get a ticket ahead of time, they are available at the front desk in the, in the church office. We have a couple of very important meetings coming up this week that you can see listed. Our Staff Parish Relations Committee will meet this afternoon. Uh, this is a closed meeting, but they have said your prayers are most definitely appreciated. And also our trustees will meet on the 4th. Um, that meeting is open with the exception of the vote about the wedding policy. Then we have lots of things appearing to be going on from June 16th through 20th in this church. The mission team will return to Marion, Virginia at that time. If you're interested in participating in this time of prayer, fellowship, and service, please contact uh, Pastor Mark. And also the 16th through the 20th, we have Vacation Bible School when the hallways of this church will just ring with children's laughter. That's the best part. Um, if you would like to volunteer for that, please contact Jessica Jacobs, our Interim Director of Children's and Family Ministries. And with that, let us join our hearts and our minds in worship. I bet a whole lot of you were like me just then, and you were singing to yourself, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Let us continue with that spirit in our call to worship. I will praise you, Lord, for I cried to you, and you have healed me. Lord, you restored me to life. Sing praise to God and give thanks to God's holy name. God's anger is but for a moment, and God's favor is for a lifetime. You have turned mourning into dancing and clothed me with joy. O oh Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Friends, this morning we are doing something a little different. Instead of one long sermon, we've got two short sermons. 
So the, the longer short sermon will come here, and then the shorter short sermon will come at the end. So uh, we're dealing with Psalm 30 this morning. We just did a response with Psalm 30. And the question I want you to think about for just a minute is this. Have you been sick? Anybody been really sick? I mean, really, really sick? So sick you just wanted to just die. Nobody's been that sick? Couple people? The psalmist in this psalm has recovered from a very grave illness. This is a hymn of thanksgiving. This is praising God because he has delivered the psalmist from a deadly experience. The psalmist had an illusion of prosperity. He felt that he couldn't be shaken. He was feeling really good about life. Then the bottom fell out. And maybe it's very much like our world, right? We're going along, things are going very well in our world until we get a medical diagnosis. Or we go through a divorce in our family. Or we go through a church split. And sometimes we're left wondering where our strength comes from. All the things that we thought we put our hope in has faded. And our question becomes, where is our hope come from? Psalm 30 helps us understand that. Because the psalmist understands that when life gets overwhelming and things can get distorted, maybe you're like me. Does anybody know what the word catastrophize means? That you think the worst? That you think this and it becomes this? Anybody have that ability to think the worst? Man, I tell you, my brain does that better than anybody's brain in here. The psalmist says, in one sense, that God is angry forever. There is no end to the weeping. But then the psalmist recognized that neither of these things is true. He corrects his thinking. That God is not angry forever. In verse 5, look at it. In Psalm 30, God says joy comes in the morning. See, the problem is in the psalm that there is pain. There is distorted thinking. But there's also a promise. See, in this psalm, the Hebrew poetry, there is, a, there is something called parallelism going on. And it's beautiful because there's all these reversals that this psalm is doing all these reversals throughout these verses that are going on. Look at verse 3. It says that, that he brought me up from Sheol as I was headed down from the pit. Brought me up as I was headed down from the pit. God's anger lasts for a moment, but his favor lasts for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but what comes in the morning? Joy comes in the morning. And then verse 11. Many of us know. Morning may happen in our life. But then we have dancing. See, Psalm 30 is a favorite psalm for many people who go through life-threatening and life-challenging times. Because we understand from the psalmist that joy comes in the morning. Can you all help me say that? Joy comes in the morning. Thanks be to God 
that we are people that recognize that. I'm going to ask that you stand with us this morning as we sing our first hymn, number 176, Majesty, Worship His Majesty. Please remain standing as we share our statement of faith from the United Church of Canada. I love this one for three things that it says. We believe in God. We trust in God. We are not alone. Let us join together. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil. To crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. Friends, do you not just love that statement, in life, in death? In life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. That is one of my favorite affirmations of faith because of that statement. And uh, that is one that I cling to in, uh, in all days, but especially in these days. As we come to a time of prayer, um, please remember the family uh, of Graham Archer. Uh, Graham died this week on uh, Friday afternoon. Uh, he had suffered uh, many years uh, with bone cancer, um, and I know Audrey uh, would appreciate your prayers. Uh, they will not be doing any kind of service for Graham, uh, but I know that she would appreciate your prayers uh, during this time. Uh, also, please be in prayer for uh, Rachel Wilhite and her par uh, parents, Grant and Bridget Wilhite. Um, Rachel uh, was a part of a, a group uh, with Tennessee Wesleyan that was traveling to Togo, uh, Africa. And Rachel uh, got sick uh, traveling back on the plane, had to be removed from the plane, has been diagnosed with uh, malaria. And um, she is right now in a children's hospital in New Jersey and is very, very ill. Uh, they are treating her for malaria. Uh, she is in um, a considerable amount of pain, and they think that the malaria uh, maybe has done some damage to some organs that they're still trying to figure out. So uh, I've been in constant contact with Bridget. 
Uh, she says that just about every day, she's just about sent me a, a flight ticket to get up there, uh, you know, just because they are in such desperate need for prayer and support. So um, I know that, that some of y'all have been praying this week, but if you would continue your prayers for Rachel and, uh, and for Grant and Bridget, I know that they would appreciate that. Are there other concerns that we can be praying for this morning as we come to Elisa? All right. Lisa's brother, Richard, who will be having a heart ablation on Friday. Are there other concerns this morning that we can mention? Yes. Dave Seclosi's brother-in-law will have another heart valve replacement on June the 6th. We can be in prayer for, for Dave's brother-in-law. Any other concerns that we can lift before each other? It's a joy this morning to have Matthew Crabtree with us. Some of you all uh, know Matthew. We love Matthew. He, he said he is glad to be here, but this is probably one of the last times he can be with you, be with us, because he is getting ready to go to Mars Hill Presbyterian uh, to be their organist and pianist. So uh, let's not get used to having Matthew. Uh, so uh, Matthew, we, we are grateful to have you with us today. We wish you well at, at Mars Hill. Other joys that we can celebrate this morning. <laughs> excellent, excellent. And already saying Papa, I'm sure. <laughs> Congratulations, Robin. Michelle. Right, so the shower bus was at Moo Fest yesterday. How many of y'all were able to go to Moo Fest? <laughs> Several of y'all were able to go down there? Yeah, Ginger's like, ah. Uh, the shower bus was down, and uh, Michelle says that, that on Wednesday of this week, uh, they will uh, be able to uh, have their first shower in that. Uh, they are ready uh, for that and still need our donations to uh, finish up the bus. So, um, and, and to have it ready for the warming center season uh, this, this fall and, and winter. So, uh, continue our donations for that. Other joys that we can celebrate. Oh, yes, Lisa. <laughs> The rain is in uh, dire need. Uh, Joe said we got a, a, a record rain in, in May, and uh, we, we needed rain for the pumpkins uh, to, to come up in the fall. So there, there we have the rain right when we needed it, didn't we, Lisa? For sure. All right, if there's nothing else, let us go to God in prayer this morning. God, we cry out to you this morning in praise. For you are the one that hears us. You are the one that restores us to life. And that is why we praise you. God, we give thanks to your holy name. For you're our creator. You're our God. You're the one that breathed life into us. And you are the one that will continue to sustain our life and our breath. God, we understand that as we come to you this morning, 
that we come to you only in humble access. That there is nothing that we could do to earn or deserve your love. And we ask that as you provide forgiveness through the death of your Son, that you bring forgiveness and restoration to each of our lives. God, thank you that that your anger is but for a moment, but your favor is for a lifetime. That you do turn our mourning into dancing and clothe our lives with joy. God, thank You for Your love that is always with us. Despite the circumstances that are in our life. Thank You for being the God who walks with us and is always near to us. And as Your early disciples prayed a prayer that taught them the way to learn and grow with You, we say these same words as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, we continue to worship this morning in the giving of our tithes and our offerings, knowing that this is an act of worship that we give back to God. Here is bread, here is wine, Christ is with us, he is with us. Break the bread, taste the wine, Christ is with us here. Here is grace, here is peace. Christ is with us, He is with us, know His grace, find His peace, feast on Jesus here. In this bread there is healing, in this cup there's life forever. Moment by the Spirit, Christ is with us here. Here we are, joined in one. Christ is with us, He is with us. We'll proclaim till He comes. Jesus crucified. In this bread there is healing. In this cup there's life forever. In this moment by the Spirit Christ is with us
we give you thanks for these gifts, O oh God, and ask that they would be multiplied in your world today. In the name of Christ, amen. You may be seated. I ask that you take your hymnals and uh, turn to the Psalter, page 769. We're going to be looking at Psalm 34, which is our uh, second scripture for today. And we're going to do uh, this as a response today. You will respond with the dark. Page number 769. I will bless the Lord at all times. God praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt God's name together. Look to God and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear God and delivers them. Oh, fear the Lord, you His holy ones. For those who fear God have no want. Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. The ears of the Lord hear their cry. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their trouble. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. Friends, this is the Word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. I want you to remember... Way, way back in your childhood. How many of you all participated in show and tell? Jackson, Caroline, did y'all ever do that still? Do y'all still do that? Probably not. Probably not. That's probably, uh, that's probably something that they did away with because of all the dangerous stuff that we, that we brought, Right? But the idea was that we brought something interesting from our home that we would show the class, that others would would find intriguing and that, that they would find interesting because if we show others, then they would believe it, right? If we show others what we had and and what that they would be impressed with, then they would believe that we had a, a tiger in our house. The psalm that we've just read, it's like a show and tell. It's like a witness psalm. Verse 8, we heard it, we read it. Taste and see for ourselves that the Lord is good. And then this psalm gives reason for that. Verses 4 through 7. 
It says that, that God answered me. That God delivered me from all my fears. That God heard me and saved me out of all my trouble. <coughs> then in 17 through 19, that still on this taste and see that the Lord is good, that the Lord hears them. That God has delivered them from all their trouble. That God is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. That God delivers the righteous from all their inflection. See, this psalm is, is a wonderful, wonderful way of, of showing what it is that, that is a witness song, a show and tell. And it's a couple of things for us in this psalm. Verse 1. You see how it begins? Bless the Lord at all times. Let that sink in for a minute. Bless the Lord, not some of the time, not when it's easy, not when it's good, but bless the Lord at all times. So the question I have for you this morning that I really want you to answer, this would be like the prayer request where y'all answer back and forth. What do you bless God for this morning? What would you bless God and give God thanks for this morning? Life. Grandchildren. Hope. Food. This church. What is that? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear it. Today, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Caroline, thank you. For today. For salvation. For everything. All right. What else do we bless God for? For love. For me, what? Thank you. For forgiveness. For growth. Do you hear all the things that we're saying this morning that we bless God for? Even in the midst of days that are hard, even in the midst of times that are unsure and fearful, that if we take a minute and we bless the Lord at all times, do you see what that does for our heart? Doesn't it feel good to take a minute and to give God thanks for joy and life and love and, and our church? To bless the Lord at all times. And even in the midst of times that are hard, do you think that there's something that we can always bless God for? Absolutely. There's always something, right? Because even in the midst of difficult circumstance, God is with us. And if that's the only thing that we can bless God for, that's enough, right? That's enough. But there's something else that we need to look at in verse 4 of Psalm 34. The psalmist says, I sought the Lord and He delivered me from all my fears. The God is our refuge. A safe place. And God's goodness is not an escape from pain and suffering. But it's a refuge of strength in the midst of it. It's a refuge of strength in the midst of a world that's hurting. It's a midst, in the midst of things that don't make sense. Some of y'all know Josh Stevens, who is our director of contemporary music. I've asked Josh to come down this morning and to lead us in a song on the piano. 
And it's a song called, It's Bound to Come Some Trouble in Your Life. It's written by Rich Mullen. Y'all know, may know the, the artist Rich Mullen. Josh is going to come this morning and share with you the song. But I want you to listen to the words. Because I think it's got something for us this morning that we need to hear. Thank you, Josh. There's bound to come some trouble to your life, but that ain't nothing to be afraid of. There's bound to come some trouble to your life, there ain't no reason to fear. I know there's bound to come some trouble to your life, but reach out to Jesus and hold on tight. He's been there before and he knows what it's like. You'll find he's there. There's bound to come some tears up in your eyes but that ain't nothing to be ashamed of <clears throat> there's bound to come some tears up in your eyes there ain't no reason to fear i know there's bound to come some tears up in your eyes Reach out to Jesus and hold on tight. He's been there before and he knows what it's like. You'll find he's there. Now people say maybe things will get better. People say maybe it won't be long And people say maybe you'll wake up tomorrow It'll all be gone Well, I only know that maybe It just ain't enough When you need something to hold on there's only one thing that's clear It's bound to come some trouble to your life But that ain't nothing to be afraid of There's bound to come some trouble to your life There ain't no reason to fear I know there's bound to come some trouble to your life But reach out to Jesus and hold on tight He's been there before and he knows what it's like You'll find he's there Thank you, Josh. Rich Mullins is one of my favorite artists. It's one of my favorite songs that he does because it's, it's true. And it, friends, that troubles do come in our life. But the Lord delivers us. And that's the faith that we hold on to. Affirmation that we had from Psalm 30 that weeping may last for the night, but joy comes in the morning. May that be something we hold on to. May that be something that centers our faith. In the name of Christ. Amen. Would you pray with me? Oh God, help us to understand the love that you have for us. 
the love that you have centered to us Christ. And the love that you have for us in the name of Jesus that you have sent to be our Savior. Thank you for giving us your Son to be our Savior. For always being with us. For always walking with us and being our God. For that we give you thanks in the name of Christ. Amen. Friends, I'm going to ask that you turn in your hymnals to page 12. We look at the great thanksgiving. Christ our Lord invites to His table all who love Him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. On the night in which He gave Himself up for us, He took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to His disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, He took the cup, gave thanks to you, Gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by His blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world 
until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at His heavenly banquet through Your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in Your holy church. All honor and glory is Yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. We invite those who are assisting in the serving of communion to come forward at this time.
Friends, as we go from this place into the rain, may we know of God's blessings. May we know of God's presence. And may you go with God's peace. May you go from this place realizing God's faith that is always with us. Go this day in peace.